Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 19th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Friday, we got yet another interesting office document taken apart by DDA. Of course, one thing that piqued DDA's interest is the Visual Basic for applications or VBA code included with the document. But beyond that, the custom XML part attracted DDA's attention. This custom XML part contained a good amount of hexadecimal content starting with the classic uh, MZ header, well, the hexadecimal representation of these two ASCII codes for PE files. Uh, DDA uh, was able to pull the hexadecimal part out with one of his famous tools and convert it to a binary file. No surprise, you ended up with uh, Windows executable, at which part DDA kind of lost interest in it. Apparently, he is on a well-deserved holiday, but uh, well, uh, what better to relax to at the beach with some nice uh, malware? And I can't find it right now, but I think someone responded on Twitter that they saw a similar piece of malware last week. So uh, this may be part of a larger uh, malware run. Gaps in the implementation of two-factor authentication have made big news uh, recently, like uh, bombing victims with pop-up notification. That's a trick that uh, was heavily used uh, by the Lapsus group, if you remember. And of course, since then, others have picked up on that same uh, trick. A different issue comes up with second factor authentication tokens that are sent to the phone as a message, either via SMS or via specific messaging apps. Some users will allow these messages to be displayed on their lock screen. And apparently, according to a BBC, this weakness has now been exploited in large numbers by thieves who are stealing phones from gym lockers. Actually, they don't even have to steal the phone. They just have to use it to log in and then put it back, which may even be more tricky than for the victim to figure out what happened. Stealing phones for their value as second factor has become a big deal. There was also some stories about Brazil uh, where this is uh, very uh, popular because a lot of phones really have very little sort of resale values these days if they're stolen uh, due to some of the anti-theft mechanisms uh, being put in place like remote locking and such. But uh, this second factor authentication in particular if the code is displayed while the phone is locked, of course, is still very valuable uh, to uh, thieves. And apparently there are a lot of people who lost money in England. That's why BBC picked up on that. Some of them sort of in the tens of thousands of dollar range or pounds. It's not a big surprise probably to anybody listening here, but if you enable enhanced spell check in Google Chrome, or related browsers like Edge, anything you type is being sent to the cloud to be spell checked. But it appears that these systems are not really taking some basic precautions to exclude PII like social security numbers. So all of this will get to Google or Microsoft if you enter it into any kind of form in your browser. There is, according to a recent blog post, also a risk of passwords being sent. Now, typically passwords are not being spell checked by these systems, but if you make the password visible, a lot of password dialogues have the little button where you can view the password, then it may be covered by the spell check and it will be sent off to the cloud. So first of all, don't do that. Don't view the password. And then uh, be all somewhat selective with some of uh, these uh, cloud-based spelling tools, Grammarly and such. I love it. Nice tool. But definitely be aware that anything you type and have inspected by the tool will be sent uh, to the cloud. 
And then something for the Monday morning water cooler discussion or Slack room discussion, depending on uh, what you're using here. But uh, there was an interesting article about uh, Zoom and other video conferencing software and how reflections in classes may be able to reveal content of a screen that the user is uh, looking at. Now, kind of like that blog post and that paper that came with it, because it's sort of not overhyping the entire issue what they found is that very large fonts uh, like headlines and such can be reconstructed but sort of the bulk of the text that's sort of in the uh, 10 point font and less is typically not reconstructable at least with current techniques as usual well be careful what you look at while you are on a video conferencing call and uh, at the same time also check what's behind you in the background. That's usually more of an issue than reflection in classes. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.